Welcome to the live show on the internet. Yeah. Can I speak to that? Go ahead. Can I speak to that? You don't mind me speaking on that? Of course not. Let me let you know something about Rosette. So I've been y'all obviously y'all know I'm a dinosaur. I've been doing this for a long fucking time. Rose. Rose been Rose was the pen. The pen. When I mean a pen, he wrote he wrote a lot of he wrote the songs to so many songs that y'all are singing oh, today yeah, yeah, that he yeah. he's not on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not on them. They're done by superstars. Yeah, and yeah. I won't speak and on we won't speak <laughs> on, And we won't speak <laughs> on them because we, we both have done such <laughs> such, yeah, such a thing. No face, but no man, face. But man, so, so when he say when he say he jumps off a plane and go do the verse no, and it's Rose been doing that since I was I was recording in a place called Circle House that was owned by a group named Inner Circle. Inner they made Circle. the song Bad Boys, Bad, Bad Boys, Boys, What, what You Gonna, gonna do? do? Yeah, what so do? take it all the way back. That's <laughs> how I was recording in their house. <laughs> right. Slime was there, right. recording for other people, right? Penning for other yeah. people, making sure they get the shit right. So yeah. when you My see name. somebody like that come up and you're like, man. And also Khaled, Khaled, he flipped it so much and became such a such who he became. I had to I had to question it. Like, is that homie from Odyssey? <laughs> like, is that homie? Because I don't know homie was gonna be doing all this. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, DJ on this. Well, this discussion was so well needed. You heard it from the horse's mouth himself, Lil Wayne, known as the greatest rapper in the industry. He called himself the greatest rapper alive. He even said it himself. Rick Ross is the pen of the industry. Rick Ross has written for top artists in all genres of music. Yeah, he just don't stick to rapping. Yeah, I know a lot of y'all say, um, you need to freestyle and you don't need to write. Nah, that's BS, man. You see how successful you can be? Look at Rick Ross, he's a writer. Yeah, you don't see him talking about, uh, don't worry about writing, go ahead and freestyle. Nah, that's Jay-Z saying all that. But at the same time, Rick Ross has written uh, music for Jay-Z and his wife, Beyonce. Yeah, but see, they's not gonna tell y'all that. They gonna make y'all think that uh, Jay Z is just putting all this flow together, which he does in some scenarios. But when the label, when the label wants a hit and they need money to be generated, they gonna call the top dogs to the table, which is Rick Ross, and he's gonna put together something that's guaranteed to hit the charts and stay at the charts for quite some time, so they can make the revenue. That's what it's all about, and that's the same thing that Drake got going on. Drake done built up a 1996 Dream Team of Liberty Team. For those who know about basketball and those who uh, know about the Dream Team, they had all the rawest players back then. I'm talking about from Akeem Olajuwon, uh, Penny Holloway, Gary Payton, John Stockton, uh, Scotty Pippen, the list goes on. But this, that's the same type of team uh, Drake has to help him write the music. Yeah, you can't downgrade Drake to somebody write his music. So what? He still can rap. He still, he has a mean delivery still. He still put in his work. It's all the team. Once, once, it's no I in team. And when you're dealing with labels, you don't make your own choices. No, nah, that's for the independent game. But when you with the big dogs and when you with the labels, they dare to make money. They dare to generate money. They not taking no gamble with nothing. This is guaranteed. So that's why they have a team and they make sure the music always be at the top of the charts. So you can't hate on Drake. You cannot hate on Drake. And Lil Wayne had to keep it all the way real because at the same time, Rick Ross done wrote a lot of stuff for Lil Wayne. Yeah, Lil Wayne will tell you he doesn't write. Of course you don't have to write when you got somebody writing for you. That's all I'm saying. Of course you don't need a writer when you, when, of course you don't need to write when you got a writer already. You can freestyle all day. Yeah, you can put that on your mixtapes. But once again, when the label needs a hit, when you are um, teaming up with somebody on a song, we, they're not going to listen to your freestyles and all that. No, we don't need that, man. We need, for sure, uh, music. We need music that's going to be a classic, that's going to stay on the charts, and that's going to generate money. That's going to be on the airwaves. That's what Rick Ross is good at. You see what I'm saying? So for all the artists that's out there and you want to give up on the rap game because you feel as if you're not getting chosen or no one's paying attention to you or your music is not getting any screams, look what Rick Ross is doing. Rick Ross is making major revenue off of writing. Off of writing. 
The same thing they try to discourage you from doing, they doing it. Yeah, because they don't want, they don't need no minute, that much competition with writers, man. It's a lot of writers out there that's real crucial at writing. Some of y'all that's watching me, watching this video right now, are very talented at writing. Pursue your dream. Yeah, pursue your dream because, like I said, that's what the labels are looking for. Stop going in that direction to get signed as an artist. Approach the game as a big dog, as a writer. You'll get way further. Because Rick Ross just don't write music. I'm quite sure he writes sitcoms, movies, you know what I mean, commercials. It just doesn't stop. The, uh, the catalog is broad when you, when you go in a game as a writer. You see what I'm saying? Because everybody can't do that. That's a gift. Everyone can't do that. And Lil Wayne kept it all the way real. But like I say, he was put in a position where he had to keep it real. When you watch the full extent of this video, it's a song that comes up that everyone loves that Lil Wayne uh, uh, put together. But Rick Ross telling you, guess who wrote that? Guess who wrote that? Up oh, like a light. Like a light. You see what I'm saying? So you already know whose song that is. Yeah, Rick Ross put that together. And that's the same song that y'all love. That's the same song that's playing in the club to this day. I go out on a Saturday night, they play that in the club. Yeah, they play that in the club. That keep everybody hype. That's, that's what you call fun music. Yeah, fun music will outlast any other type of music. Motivational and fun music will outrun any type of music. So if you're a writer, that's something that you might want to gravitate towards. Even when I take trips to Atlanta, what I like about the Atlanta scene, you don't have too much drill music in Atlanta. I rarely uh, uh, hear drill music. You don't really hear drill music like that. Matter of fact, I don't think I heard drill music the whole time I was in Atlanta. It was all hype, crump music. Music that keep you motivated. Music that keep you hype. You go to the club, it's the same way. People are participating. They're not just standing around looking like uh, zombies. Nah, they end up dancing and you know what I mean? Because of the atmosphere. And those are the songs that Rick Ross writes. Rick Ross done wrote for 2 Chain. He done wrote for Lil Wayne, Drake, Jay-Z. All your top artists, Rick Ross done wrote for. But they not going to say this because they know that uh, uh damage their career. They might lose fans. But I say I don't think so because Drake openly tells you that he has a team, that all of them sit together, that he has PRs, he has proofreaders. He might put something together and you got eight people around the table and they just slide the paper to the next person, to the next person until it comes back and then they give it to them and tell them to go in the booth. Next thing you know, it's on all platforms. So guess what? That's what we got to start doing. We got to come together as a team to make the dream work. You see what I'm saying? A lot of y'all looking at Rick Ross thinking he just got them wing stop uh, chicken places. Nah, man. Nah. He ghost writes. He writes. He's a pen for the industry. He's generating a lot of revenue. Yeah, if you want to sit down and have a conversation with somebody, Rick Ross is the guy. Now, how much game he'll give you, that's up to him. But as you can see, he's the pen of the industry, and that's why he got all the jokes for everybody. Now, the weakest link, I believe, that's up there right now is DJ Khaled because he doesn't produce anything. All he do is piggyback over of somebody else's material and holler, he the best. <laughs> yeah, that's what he do. Yeah, he flipped the stuff around. You heard Lil Wayne, he flipped everything around and um put it how he want to put it and then holler, we the best. You understand what I'm saying? But I guess you are the best because you in your own lane because I don't know too many people that's taking other people's material and um chopping it up, talking about we the best. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand that with DJ Khaled. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because you don't really, you don't really got a skill. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of DJs out there in Florida 
that can do way more than what you're doing. But you was put in that position. You was put in that position for a reason, and you do put out good material. It's a few things that uh that you don't put out. A couple albums. It's a couple songs on those albums that's fire. It's a couple of them that's gonna be classics. I got to give you that. But at the same time, we can't uh say you a hell of a DJ, or we can't say you done uh produced or you done brought something to the game because you didn't. All you doing is generating and reusing, recycling, and putting it into a mix. And all you doing is screaming, "We the best." You know what I mean? Nah, you not the best, but the people that you uh that you using their material, they damn sure the best. <laughs> yeah, they damn sure the best. Yeah, cause they got you eating the way you eat. They got you successful the way you are successful. You know what I mean? And I'm glad Lil Wayne was honest, and I'm glad um uh, DJ Khaled, you was humble enough to accept what, 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 what Lil Wayne was saying. Yeah, I'm glad you was humble enough to accept what Lil Wayne was saying because it definitely take a man to uh to uh sit there and take criticism. You see what I'm saying? But that was constructive criticism. He told the truth. It wasn't really no cr criticism. He told the truth. He was just being honest at the time. And shout out to Lil Wayne. Shout out to uh, Rick Ross. And shout out to DJ Khaled, man. With that being said, if you smell some stink, that's me, Urban Gossip TV, because we the shit. <laughs>